So in this JavaFX language primer, what we're going to look at is exactly what is a JavaFX script. So we'll look at the term scripting in general. Then we'll take a look at uh, the various data types that are defined in the JavaFX language. We'll take a look at how to declare a variable. We'll see there's a couple different types of variables uh, per the JavaFX syntax. We'll look at how to represent functions and classes in JavaFX we'll see that these two are not necessarily always tied together as they are uh, tied together in Java when we talk about methods and classes. We'll look at a term called expressions. What exactly is an expression in JavaFX? And we'll see that essentially JavaFX applications are just chock full of all sorts of expressions. That's the basic building block, if you will, of building a JavaFX script. We'll look at a very powerful feature called data bindings. And lastly, we'll look at packages and access modifiers, which work in a similar way to the way packages and access modifiers work in Java. Okay, so first off, what exactly is a JavaFX script? We mentioned really the name of the language you're looking at is called JavaFX script. What is a script in JavaFX? Essentially, this is the program that uh, is our JavaFX application. So a JavaFX script is essentially a set of expressions and declarations. Scripts are saved into a .fx file extension as we mentioned earlier. Unlike Java, code that we write, script code that we write in JavaFX, doesn't have to be in a class. There can be code out there that's just, uh, if you will, kind of hanging around in a file that still can be executed but isn't necessarily part of any class as everything has to be in the Java realm. So for example, a couple of valid scripts are shown here. Yep, believe it or not, 9.8 and hello world, those are two very valid scripts. So you can uh, fool your boss if you will. You can take him a piece of paper and tell him or her, write down a number, then turn to him or her and say, there you go, you're now a JavaFX script writer. It's that simple, gang. Now, of course, to do something interesting, we need to do more than just represent some sort of number or string literal, as we've shown here. A real true JavaFX script has to actually start to work with things like the literals we've just shown you. So to start to do something interesting, we can add a print line function call on top of 9.8 or hello world. So again, two valid uh, scripts are listed here, printing of 9.8 and printing of hello world. In this case, probably just dumping that uh, content of 9.8 or hello world out to a DOS prompt. When more than one expression is part of a script, then we have to add a semicolon to separate the two. So shown here, we want to add these two lines of code into a single script. Notice the semicolon after that first line. Unlike Java, not every line of code has to have a semicolon. For example, you'll notice there is no semicolon after that last line of code. Semicolons are only used to separate expressions or, if you will, uh, building blocks of our JavaFX script. Everything in JavaFX script, and by the way, I'll start to simplify my terms here a little bit. Yes, it is JavaFX script is the actual programming language we're talking about, but most people just refer to that as just plain old JavaFX. So everything in JavaFX has a data type, or more simply, just a type. That includes variables, functions, and yes, even expressions, which again we'll talk about more coming up in just a bit. There are some value types, if you will, a kind of subset of all types in JavaFX. Value types are either string, integer, number, boolean, or duration. To some extent, uh, those of us in the Java community might look at those and say, ah, that kind of looks like a primitive, if you will. In some, if you will, loose ways, these are very much like our Java primitives, but not entirely. For example, you'll notice that string is in that list along with integer and number. And this is the only set of value types we have. So the value types are much simpler than, say, the different primitives we have in Java, which include things like double and float. These value types all have built-in language support. In fact, they also include a set of literals. When I write down 9.8, I'm referring to a number. That is a number literal. They also have some built-in operations that we'll talk about, things like plus and minus and multiplication, division, those things are all built-in operations for these value types. Uh, duration is an exception there. There is no built-in operation for duration. Oh, by the way, I should mention, too, that certain operations that we're familiar with in Java are probably or may not be there in JavaFX. For example, many of us are very familiar with an operation, the plus sign, for string concatenation. Hmm, not available when it comes to JavaFX language. 
All these value types also are what we consider to be immutable or not allowed to be changed. And when you declare a variable of one of these value types, and we'll learn how to do a variable declaration in just a bit, you'll find that all of these have a default value. That is, these value types have a default value. Uh, the default values are listed in order for the value types listed here. When we declare a string or when we have a string value type, you can use either the double quotes or single quotes to represent a string literal. A little bit unusual and different from Java. If we used uh, single tick marks or single quotes in Java, that would represent a character. No such beast, no such animal in the Java FX realm. You can use either double quote or single quote to represent a string literal. And as I mentioned, since we don't have a concatenation operator in JavaFX, how do you concatenate two strings together? Well, two strings, two string literals that is, they're left next to each other, are actually merged automatically by JavaFX. So if I have good morning and class, that all gets merged together for good morning class. There's also what we call a function type in JavaFX. Again, everything is typed in JavaFX. So, for example, if I want, I can set this variable, and we'll learn about variables in just a second, squared sum equal to this particular function. We're not assigning it necessarily to the function call. We're not assigning it to values that come out of this function. We're actually assigning it to the function itself. We'll learn more about variables and more about functions coming up in a bit as well. There is a class type also, which we'll talk about, and obviously functions can be something that can be defined inside of a class type, but they don't have to be. We'll learn about that as well. Lastly, we have something called a sequence type. For those of you who are in the Java community, you would uh, see the sequence type as being synonymous with either a collection and or an array in our Java world. We only have uh, sequences in JavaFX, no such thing as an array or collection. It's denoted with square brackets. And again, sequences, very much like arrays in Java, are immutable. Again, not subject to change. When we think about uh, sequences and uh, building sequences, here's a pretty simple one. The numbers 1 through 4, referenced to uh, using literals, uh, little integers, right inside of a sequence. But that same sequence can be represented this way in syntax. 1 dot dot 4 gives us all the integers between 1 and 4. Sequences cannot hold other sequences. In other words, we can only have single dimensional uh, arrays if you want to think of it in array terms uh, as far as sequences are concerned. So if you try to do something like this, in other words, put uh, sequences, what looked to be as elements of a sequence, well, in JavaFX, that's not actually a compiler error. It's not going to be a runtime error. That's just going to get treated as if those other square brackets are ignored, the inner square brackets are ignored. So that actually gets treated as a sequence of 1, 5, 8, 9 regardless of how many square brackets we have in place there. And the value null has no meaning in uh, a sequence. And we'll learn that uh, null is a, uh, a value that can be returned, for example, by a function. Uh, null has no meaning in a sequence. So writing 1, null, and 3 as elements of a sequence is the same thing as just writing 1 and 3 as elements of a sequence.